Welcome, Thorsten. Great to have you with us again for this uh, marketing summit where great marketing leaders talk about their achievements. So Thorsten Hartzer uh, is Vice President and Head of Digital Accelerator at a leading European biotech company called Kyogen. Now, let's try to get inside your mind to stick with the slogan of the event by asking you a few questions, if you allow. First, can you briefly tell us who Kyogen is and what challenges you as an enterprise recently faced and how they affected you in your job as Head of Digital Accelerator? Sure, Daniel. Um, thanks, first of all, for having me again. It's a great pleasure to, to be here. Um, let me briefly explain what Kyogen is, uh, because most of you are probably not familiar with the company. Kyogen is a leading manufacturer of sample preparation and testing technologies, both in the clinical space uh, and also in research. Um, we're a stock-listed company um, in the US and Germany with roughly 5,000 employees and roughly 2 billion revenues in uh, 2020. Um, within Kyogen, I have the pleasure to head the so-called Digital Accelerator, which is a cross-functional department driving digital transformation along the entire value chain. The Digital Accelerator consists of roughly 150 digital natives, um, people with very diverse backgrounds, developers, data scientists, UX designers, e-commerce managers that partner with colleagues from all over the company to drive digitalization projects in their area of responsibility. Great, thank you, Torsten. Any anything you want to tell us about the uh, pandemic, how it affected you? I know you uh, provide these uh, PCR tests, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, probably, you know, that's a, a business that runs well in, in, at the moment and uh, might have affected you in your job also. In, indeed, the, the pandemic had uh, quite a significant impact um, on us. Uh, and actually in, in two ways. So first of all, as you just pointed out, we are indeed one of the biggest manufacturers of Rona tests and reagents. Um, so when the pandemic hit us end of February, March, and there was huge demand for these products, of course. And uh, within, within a very short time frame, we had to scale up our production. And actually until the end of last year, we scaled up production by a factor of 10. Um, let's say with all the challenges that come across with this, um, as you can imagine, you know, in the in the supply chain, um, uh, you know, for 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 our workforce, we needed to find people to operate in a three shift, twenty four seven system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was one part of the challenge. The other part of the challenge was uh, actually that suddenly we were not able to visit our customers anymore because universities, labs were closed down. Um, we were not able to attend conferences, uh, you know, where, where we usually meet our clients and, and you know, discuss new product launches, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so within weeks, actually, we had to move all this uh, to a virtual environment. And there actually it paid off that we as Kyogen had embarked on, on this journey of digital transformation already um, five years ago uh, with significant achievements, especially in the area of, of e-commerce. So just to give you one example, um, by the end of 2020, um, roughly two thirds of our transactions were already coming in via digital channels, via e-commerce channels. So it was pretty easy for us to serve our customers um, and via these channels during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, we also needed to find alternatives for, um, for the, uh, the personal interactions that usually take place during such, uh, such conferences or fairs. And for this, we, we launched a series actually of virtual events, of webinars that worked quite well for us. Um, okay. interestingly, interestingly, we generated more leads from these webinars and virtual conferences than we previously did uh, from, from physical conferences. Wow. Uh, so this really became the, let's say, the most important source of lead generation for us. And to drive people to these uh, webinars and virtual conferences, we heavily used social media. So also this became, the, let's say, the most important avenue for, for, you know, for getting people interested in Kyogen and, and making them aware um, of, of our webinars and conferences. So there actually was a major shift, um, which we well managed, managed quite well. Very interesting. Uh, could you keep up the level of customer experience you provide? I, I know you claimed earlier uh, that you provide a better customer experience than Amazon. So could you keep up that level uh, during uh, this increase in business? 
We we could actually, and I would say we even improved uh, because of course you know we didn't we didn't stop in in uh, February or March when the pandemic hit us, but we executed our roadmap. Um, we we launched new features, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we are still following this uh, very bold vision of a, providing a customer experience beyond Amazon. And just to provide you a little bit of context here, the reason why we're claiming this is that opposite to Amazon, where uh, you know, many of us just browse the Amazon portfolio, and then at the very last point of time, we log in to purchase something. In our environment, it's very different actually, because you know our customers uh, are mainly researchers, um, and they're they're very sensitive about their their personal data and with whom they share what. So they they want to be in a safe environment, which um, actually means that uh, most of our customers want to log in first before they start interacting for uh, with us, before they start sharing with us uh, information. And as you can imagine, I mean, once the customer logs in, we can perfectly identify um, who the, the customer is. Is it a researcher um, in the lab? Is it the lab manager? Is it the purchaser of, uh, of one of our customers uh, or, or whoever is, is, is going to interact with us? And then we can tailor and personalize the information we are showing this customer, uh, let's say, in a, in a very convenient way. Uh, so, of course, a researcher has different information needs than a purchaser. And uh, we are perfectly able to cater to these differing needs. And that's why we believe that ultimately we have a better customer experience than Amazon, because we are much, much better able to differentiate between the different roles in which customers are visiting us. Very interesting. Yeah, from an earlier conversation, I know that you have a couple of uh, uh, rather delicate uh, customers, like Nobel Prize winners. Uh, so uh, you better provide a good customer experience there. So how has technology supported you in delivering hyper-personalized experiences to your customers? You know, that customer experience that is beyond that of Amazon, as you claim. So as you can imagine, um, technology is the underlying enabler for all of this, what, what we are offering. And we are, we are using different kinds of technologies, different kinds of platforms. Um, for our entire digital marketing, for example, we use uh, the Oracle platform. Um, to you know, to build automated multi-layer campaigns um, to to follow up with our customers, um, and that's actually something that we advanced over the course of last year. Um, also, with the help of the Oracle team, who really got into the weeds with our colleagues, um, setting up multi-stage campaigns where you know, depending on the action of the customer, we would trigger a a certain flow of events, and we could indeed prove that these kind of campaigns perform better also lead to better conversion than the, let's say, the one-size-fits-all campaigns uh, that, that we used previously. And currently, we are in the process really of promoting this type of, of new campaigns um, to our marketing organization to urge them to make much more use of these type of campaigns, you know, instead of, instead of the, uh, say the, the, the more general campaigns they tend to use in the past. So that's just clearly something where we gained lots of experience um, over the course of last year. And it will definitely continue this uh, in 2021. That's automated campaigns uh, using Aloqua, right? Absolutely, yeah. Hmm. Any anything uh, you have planned for you know this uh, calendar year? Something on top of what you've already done? Well, I mean, as you can imagine, the uh, the pipeline is full at the beginning of this year. Um, so we have quite an ambitious goal for our um, customer self service platform, MyKiagen. Um, end of last year, we had 90,000 registered customers on this self-service platform, which, as you can imagine, is a huge asset because uh, from these customers, we have full consent for, for you know, any kind of, of marketing and sales activities. Uh, we are able to interact with them in a very personal way um, via this platform. And of course, we want to, to scale this up further um, to 115,000 customers by the end of this year. And of course, we will also add new functionality um, a second goal we're pursuing this year is to really bring connectivity to our instruments in the lab. We uh, launched our Kaiosphere connectivity platform end of last year, um, including an app to remotely monitor and uh, manage your instruments. And we will roll this out to, to our entire instrument portfolio this year and the coming years. 
Um, and last but not least, of course, we also want to get more professional in the in the area of of, of marketing to you know play with new formats, um, even make let's say make uh, make advanced use of uh, of rather new channels you know like Instagram, like LinkedIn. Uh, to reach out to our target group and you know, see how how effective these how effective these these channels are for our purposes, and last but not least, what we strongly believe is that uh, even if the pandemic is over at some at some point, we will not see customers reverting to offline events again. We believe that um, a majority of events will stay online. So we are currently thinking about upgrading our platform there for, for virtual conferences and webinars. And uh, we're also planning to invest in this area yeah, to even become more professional uh, in, the, in, in the way we, uh, we interact with our customers virtually. Yeah, interesting. I, I share that belief with you. And uh, coming back to your uh, you know, endeavor going uh, omni-channel using uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and so on, Aloco would certainly support you there. So how has, you know, I mean, that partnership with Oracle has been uh, for, for going on for some while now. And uh, I was wondering how your personal experience was with working uh, with Oracle, with the Oracle team. I must say, I mean, overall, it was really an excellent um, experience uh, because the relationship we as Kaijin are having with Oracle is not so much a, a vendor or supplier buyer relationship. Uh, but rather a true partnership um, where really um, Oracle colleagues spend time um, in our Wroclaw shared service center where all the developers are based and uh, really working with them together, sitting there, um, you know, thinking about problems, providing solutions, trying things out, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's actually something I've never experienced before with, with any other vendor. Uh, that people are really, you know, available on site, you know, sit down with the team, uh, even for an entire week um, to, you know, to work on solving certain problems or to really work on, on advancing um, the, the way, you know, we, we do marketing at Kaiju. That's really very much appreciated, uh, not only by me, but actually in the entire organization. Nice to hear. Um, it's always... Nice to hear that uh, kind of words uh, from, from a customer directly. So I really appreciate it. I appreciate uh, you had uh, time to talk with us today. And I think time is up. So we need to end it here, unfortunately. And uh, I thank you very much for you know, joining us today. And uh, wish you lots of success in uh, 2021. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.